What is going on guys? This is Nick here at Y for True, but we are playing NHL 17 be a GM mode with our Colorado Avalanche. Now we're up at free agency. Uh, we had a pretty good year. We went ahead and went through our first playoff series as a GM. Uh, wasn't bad. We went, you know, four and one though. Or rather the series was four to one and we lost obviously. So um, right when I get into it, uh, or right as I get into it, I want to just go over your comments that you submitted in the last two episodes. Um, unfortunately, I just forgot to edit. I said, like, here are your comments, but I didn't edit in the actual comments from the previous video. So here are all the comments from last video and the previous. So it's going to include trade deadline things. I did, you know, obviously read them and, and take those to heart for the draft and, and the deadline, everything, but I forgot to post them. So here's all those Thank you guys for all the help. And we are going to actually go back a little bit to a comment I got a few videos ago about a trade. Um, there was also in the most recent video a trade for this dude uh, suggested, Ratnan. Now, I would most likely, I would typically like wait until he's probably going to jump in preseason like up to an 86 or an 87. But I just want to get rid of him. So this... This actual trade was suggested to me uh, direct from one of you guys. It's going to Ottawa. So they want him, which is great, for this dude right here, Hoffman. Now, it's not going to be straight up because his trade value is actually a little lower. You know, he's a second-line forward, but his shooting stats are great. He's a really good player, uh, decently quick. He's got good, like, all-around skills. He can definitely help out that first line. The thing was, I was looking for a lot of younger guys, snipers that could help out McKinnon, and I wasn't finding anything that anyone would really want to do. They don't want to give up Hoffman, but look at the trade value there. We could, you know, this would go through, obviously, but we need to get something out of them. So I haven't really looked into this at all, This, uh, but maybe we could get a first i highly doubt this i highly doubt this will go through because they don't want to give up either so i'm thinking of 20 because 2020 you guys said is the best year uh coming up so let's see if this goes through if not maybe we can add in a second or something because that would be kind of cool um yeah so let's see if we can add in uh maybe we can add in this year's second and just see if this one goes through because uh yeah this would be amazing a first because they think ratton this elite player you know he's already crazy um, he's already 85, I mean, and he's already looking like he's got crazy good potential. 6'4", 213. I mean, on paper, this dude rules. Does not work out in practice. And actually, he is a sniper. Um, he, I changed him to two-way forward just to kind of salvage the season, see if he could maybe start passing it a little more because he wasn't shooting it for some reason. Um, all his stats on paper look really great. You know, they're still growing, but they look great, but he's just not producing. You guys said it's just some players are just weirdly programmed to just never work out, even though he might get high 80s. Um, so I don't know if this will work, but this trade was suggested, trying to get a pick in Hoffman for Ratnan, and the general consensus is he needs to go because he's playing like a 79 overall or something. He's just like getting five points a year. That's not going to cut it. We need this elite dude here. Uh, and plus, it'll fill us in. Uh, a little bit on the salary end without bulking up on guys. Now, I do have some free agent moves I want to make, but this I want it to get away right away so we can just forego all the chemistry stuff, get lines together, and just go for it. Because uh, we are going to, I think we're going to do about a month of simulating in this video. So let's see if this goes through. I don't think it will. We might have to settle for like a second round pick instead. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it just barely went through. They said, we'll see out on the ice. Looks good to them. That was surprising. So not only do we get a first round pick in 2020, but we get Mike Hoffman to throw up on the first line with McKinnon. Now we can actually go back here because I want to go into free agency. Now we've got a ton of extra space uh, on the cap, $21 million and we're going to be fine. Um, our cap hit is already above the minimum, but you know, we can, we can sign on, by the way, uh, what's his name? Hoffman had about a three year deal. So it works out perfectly for our current scheme. So that's awesome. I did want to, I was looking and you guys want me to see if we can get Keener here. So, um, Keener, actually, uh, there were a couple other 
depth guys. Nash was one, and I think he said Eves was up here. Um, oh, yeah, I passed him. Yeah, Eves, I've always really liked Eves. Patrick Eves has been one of my favorite players. I was devastated when they traded him from the Wings. But uh, it's all good. But, yeah, he, he'd be pretty cool. We could throw him on the penalty kill or something like that. So we got to go a little above here. So I'll do uh, 1.25. That's not bad. Two years is fine. That fits in our scheme. Um, and, you know, worst comes to worst, we can trade him at the deadline. I'm not going to try to force a one-year deal on him because um, he'll probably get some minutes. So that'll be good. You guys also want me to get Nash um, because he wanted a, a low contract. And he can he can probably help. Out. Wait, actually, what's he? Yeah, he's depth forward. So he can help out AHL if we need him down there. We'll do the same. But yeah, a one-year deal I think would be better uh, for Nash. Because I actually, I know I keep jumping back. Yeah, he doesn't have as good defensive stats. So I don't necessarily want him uh eves is more serviceable with the uh with the way he plays so there's three we we have a ton of room contracts wise so i think we should try to get kane second line left winger um and potential something oh detroit wants him so i know you guys said there's kind of a formula for this i kind of looked around and i know you can do like kind of the same where you put like 15 more percent up on it um, I'm going to say we offer him 7 mil. I think two years is fine because it's three years when everybody starts kind of running out of money. I think 7 mil, 600,000 more than he's even asking, should be fine. If not, we did just get Hoffman. Um, it's just one of those things where we're going to have to figure out where Landeskog plays, you know, that kind of thing. It's a good problem to have. Too many great players. So we'll offer him 7 for two years. Um, and then we're just, I think we got like one or two other, no, I think we have about four more contracts available. Um, and I think we could get, actually, if we can get a defensive prospect, that'd be really nice. Um, no, he's 26. Who is the, I think there was a 20 year old, this guy, this guy might be okay. Uh, offensive defenseman left hand. He's already got really good power. Yeah. We were going to try to snag him up. I'll just do that. He fits into our scheme. And uh, we could go with a forward, but I think I'm going to attempt to... Um, yeah, I think we're going to... Oh, I was going to get Faxa, wasn't I? Yeah, we can we can see if he's available later. Because I think for what we're doing right now... And then we may need a goalie. Because we've offered four contracts. I think we'll have like two available or so. Yeah, we don't really have much here to work with yeah back up back up ah. yeah i don't think we should go for any of these guys we've we've already got enough and if anything you know in the future we could maybe trade for something but let's see if these ones go through the only one i'm kind of worried about is kane because i don't i don't necessarily want to offer him like way over seven mil for two years worst comes to worst we make a trade you know it's not going to be the the biggest deal in the world so we'll go one day at a time here uh, offer a couple free agent deals. Okay, we got our uh, defensemen. Let's see here. Patrick Eves, Nash, and it should be probably like one more day here. Okay, we got Kaner. All right, so let's actually look and see how many contracts we have available. I know like the rosters are all weird, so sometimes it doesn't allow you to sign certain people because of where they're put. But yeah, 48 out of 50. Um, and actually, let's keep it on here so I can I can actually count out what we've got on forwards just so you guys can can kind of see so if we go for forwards overall one two three four five six so that's actually fine that looks great with gregorenko in the center uh we could even move one of these you know we could i don't know we could move somebody up to the right wing on this line with hoffman and mckinnon because we know they're going to be together um, you know, we don't know, maybe Barzell or something will jump a little bit. Um, obviously Sheehan's going to play third line minutes. Um, we got Boyle for the fourth line. So everything after that is just kind of filling in the blank. So I'm not too worried about it. And then Eves and Nash, obviously those guys can play in the AHL. Worst comes to worst. Jost, I want playing the center probably on the third line again this year. I don't think that'll be a problem at all. And as for, uh, defensemen here, let's look at that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That looks pretty good. And 
then our uh, our core down here will be actually pretty good with some some actual potential guys. Uh, I should have gone the other way. What was I doing? Uh, and then goalies, just as a reminder, two up, two down. So that'll be fine. You guys are also saying we can uh, we could most likely sign Dolan uh, and he'd play. Are, are you guys sure about that? Because he's only 18. I know he was playing over in Sweden, but I, does EA account for that? I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure because if we sign him and then we kind of lose a year to the the well the the Swedish leagues, you know, it won't be the worst thing in the world. But I just want to make sure we're not losing out on contracts we don't need to give out. Uh, so let me know down in the comments about that uh, before I sign because we're only going to go about a month. Worst comes to worst, we can sign him uh, a month in. And I think we'll be able to bring him up. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Yeah, these other dudes. I, I can't wait till we clean up this whole team and we just got all potential guys. That'll be nice. All right, so we're not going to make any more trades. I don't think we need to sign anyone else. I'll take a quick look and see what's left because uh, I don't think we need Faxa, but if he's available, it might be kind of cool. Man, look, Little still asking for all that. Tourists asking for the same. Um, if what's his name is down here. Oh, we could get uh, Trevor Van Riemsdyk. But he wants like, oh, yeah, he's a top six role. I thought he would be minor. Yeah, I think we should be good. I'm not really seeing. I mean, Fax is here. He's got a couple years of growth left. I'm just think I think we should sign him, actually. Because if he grows and he really helps the, uh, the minor league team, yeah, if he grows, we're going to be really set up. Yeah, one year. That's, that's actually fine. And we can just kind of see what happens. And just to have, like, a better face-off guy, he's got a good shot. Um, he could even anchor the first line in the AHL and just help out one of our rookies. Um, I was looking at Ward um, up here. That would have been sick to bring in Ward. Uh, and have. I know he probably wouldn't like playing the AHL, but that would be pretty cool. Have a big body guy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and sim up to the preseason here. And see what happens. I think for this team, our what? Okay, cool. We got Faxa, so we're bringing everybody in. Um, we we've got to play our big guns in the AHL. I think this is a really important year for the AHL squad. Um, the next two years are, and then the third year I think is our cup run year. That's like our legit 100% championship contender year. Uh, I think maybe year two we could make a big push. And this year I think we could make a decent push. But I think year three is the cup year uh, from now. So three years from now, you know, we've got a couple big contracts on the books. But everybody's got the poise. Everybody's grown up together. So there's some chemistry. Every single person on the squad is just ready for the cup run. You know, we've been in the playoffs. I want to make the playoffs every year, but, you know. And the cool thing is, 2020 coming up, we do have a first-round pick. Um, two of them, actually. So that'll be really nice. You guys said that's a really nice deep draft. So, you know, those two first-rounders, we could trade up to a top-five pick. So get thinking about that right now. Let the gears start turning and seeing what we can do because we most likely won't be a bad team. Uh, but we don't know about Ottawa. I mean, we gave them... Uh, Rantanen, which most likely he'll play amazing for some other team because that's what happens in all the GMs when, like when we traded, I think we traded Griffin Reinhardt and then the next year he simulated like amazingly for uh, whoever we traded him to. I don't even remember uh, when we were in Edmonton, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty weird the whole simulation engine. But I think we'll be good this year. I, we've kind of got too many cooks. We got too many players that are good enough to play higher and more minutes and we don't really have room for them. So that's another thing I'm going to kind of go through most likely take a couple minutes off camera, organize the lines. We'll go ahead and simulate a little bit and then we'll, uh, we'll end the episode. You guys can tell me to make any changes or anything like that. And then we'll go about it that way. So let's take a look at our team here um i think i'm gonna go right to roster moves because i have a feeling they're gonna be all jacked up so 
Okay, Hoffman's up to an 87. That's pretty good. So is Landeskog. Uh, Carrick's up to an 87, which is huge. That's huge. Uh, Gregorenko up to an 86. Kane, 86. Zadorov still the 85. Yakupov's an 85. So we're kind of seeing the same here. Bigger still an 83. Yeah, Fat Faxa is down to a 79, but we can we can get back up here. So that's everybody uh, on the forward side. Let's see if our goalies have uh, have moved. Uh, nope, they haven't. So that's looking fine. Um, okay, so we yeah we need to bring a bunch of these dudes up. Yeah, Joe didn't grow. That kind of sucks. So. I'm going to go through. Oh, man, look at Lemieux up at an 83. Yeah, we can play him with Boyle. I think that would be a nice line. Him, Boyle. I mean, I could see some points out of that duo right there. Especially just the pure intimidation. I mean, man, that line's got to be scary. So let me go through this. Organize the lines a little bit. Uh, send guys up, send guys down. And we will go ahead and jump back in. And just it'll be literal moments for you for me it's gonna probably be like 10 minutes so see you in a second all right so i was going to attempt to do some actual simming in this episode and i decided against it um we've got a problem there's too many cooks there's too many players that we could potentially use on this team that i want to get minutes but they're not going to we're gonna have to either a make some trades or b I don't know, send people down that we don't need to. If we don't make trades, we're going to basically be losing overall on these guys. And it's we're just going to be scratching them or sending them down to AHL. It's just not worth it. So obviously, first line is still up for debate, but I really kind of like the sniper. Uh, the thing is, I don't like two snipers, but McKinnon with Hoffman, sure. What I was thinking was we could do this, a power forward playmaker sniper, but then that would make the second line sniper playmaker sniper so you know what do you guys think should we keep yakupov as a sniper and maybe ask nicely if evander Kane will play more of a two-way game um the thing is i don't know that doesn't really 100 percent make sense the the top six isn't really a priority for me at this point they're gonna do well i feel like either way everybody's got really great stats we've got some good players up here some elite shooters uh, that it's the bottom six that's tough for me because Sheehan is a good overall player. He's nice and balanced. He's actually got a really good shooting category and a physical category. Doesn't really have the defensive category I'd like a two way forward to have. But he's you know he's quick. He he looks pretty good. Obviously EA has him simulate a little better than he is in real life. He'll get more points at least. Um, Jost obviously he's gonna play in the in the center there. That'll be totally fine. He'll grow a ton and uh, hopefully we won't be playing him above his role so i don't know if he'll actually grow that much more we might have to actually put him up here in order to grow so that's another thing uh you guys could help me out with barzell we're gonna play him on the third line this year and maybe next year we'll put him up to the second line i was thinking though you know we could switch him with yakupov because look at this shooting category absolutely filthy slap shots and then his wrist shots are not bad at all He's really fast. Doesn't really have defensive awareness, though, but his pucks, everything on the offensive side is great. So this could actually be really good. And the Yakupov stays down here on the third line, just kind of stays his right wing. This would be a good line either way. Sheehan, Jost, and, and Yakupov. That would actually be awesome. Then Barzell actually grows, and maybe we get him to elite, uh, poten or elite overall rather than just low elite potential. Fourth line, Boyle, we wanted him because of his face-offs and his physical category. Really good fourth liner. Lemieux, obviously, playing the fourth line. He was the whole reason, the whole GM, the first episode we get him because he is a descendant of that elite organization past of the Avalanche. So I'd really like to keep him off the team. And his stats look good, guys. They look really good for a power forward. Uh, we could even make him a grinder because he's got a decent physical category, but I think he can he can put the puck in the net uh, with Boyle. I mean, th this is a duo that you do not want to face. And then Hosang, obviously, we could play him higher. Um, but, I mean, his stats are still kind of catching up. He's a great player. He's a decent player, right-handed, which is great. But, you know, not looking like he could take, you know, 
Barzell out of there. So, you know, I don't, I don't think so at least because that'd be two playmakers. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Here's the problem. Without going to the defense first, here's our scratch players. Uh, Eves, yeah, we're probably going to keep him scratched. I didn't put him down in the AHL. Grimaldi and Nieto. So Grimaldi's already an 84. He's got great categories. He shoots really well. He's really fast. Great puck skills. Not really anything on the defensive side, um, but everything else looks really good. Plus, he's right-handed. Uh, he's very short, though. He's 5'6", so I don't know if that's a thing. Nieto, obviously, great two-way guy. Got decent defensive awareness. Um, everything else is pretty balanced. He's actually pretty quick, uh, so he could slot in for somebody. And then, obviously, Eves. Um, so that's kind of looking at that. So I was thinking maybe we trade away a couple people for some picks just because we don't really need prospects at this point because we're filled in the AHL as well. I'll just give you a peek real quick. AHL lines are absolutely filled to the brim with potential players. Carlson, I wanted to bring up, but he's a depth forward. So we get we got to, you know, at least we can keep him down one more year. Leipzig as well. I mean, these two guys are older, so they won't grow as much, which I feel, you know, that sucks. But I, we just have too many great players. It's really tough. So that's kind of my dilemma. You know, I don't want to send any of these guys down. They go down in overall. They don't recover, you know, this or that. I don't want that to happen. If anything, I want to trade away a Grimaldi or something for like a first round pick again in 2020. That would be awesome. Stockpile a bunch of picks, you know, trade up to the first or get another prospect. Uh, once older guys go away, like Kane in two years, you know, Hoffman in three years uh, or two years, I guess now. So these two guys are gone in two years, both these guys. So that could be a reassess for the cup run. Our guys grow and then the third year it's ready. Um, it, you know, there's a bunch of different, different things we could go about, but I just wanted to ask you guys first, here's what the D looks like. I put Carrick up here, Zadorov here. I was thinking I kind of want Zadorov to play above his role because he's top four, just so he goes up a little bit. And I'd really like Sandheim or Bigress to to go up. Um, but I don't know where they slot in. And remember, Bigress was getting, or Big Graw was getting no points. We got him for pretty cheap. So he could also be a trade asset. You know, maybe we trade for another really good defenseman. I don't know. I don't really want to get into too crazy of uh, any ideas. But I think it'd be really cool to play uh, like Zidorov with Carrick. So it's offensive, defensive, left, right. And then maybe Barry and Shattenkirk can play down here since they're top four guys and they're not growing. I mean, imagine this one-two punch. These two guys are still growing. They grow up to like elite and we have like an all 90 top four. That's a dream right there. I mean, we would barely even need our bottom two guys. So let me know if that's something you guys want to work on. And then obviously our goaltenders are not, you know, they're just going to kind of go back and forth with, with whatever works. Hopefully Stolarz can get some time. But that's kind of my question. Um, I am going on a brief vacation uh, back to Michigan for the weekend. I've scheduled videos for every single day, but I don't think the Monday GM will be up because I want to get your guys' questions first. I was thinking maybe I could uh, record them after it, right after it was posted so I could get a couple comments in and go. But this is kind of a difficult situation we found ourselves in. We can't just simulate through to the trade deadline. Next episode is going to be a full sim to the trade deadline so i want to make sure we have the best lineups and we really go for it uh for growth so just remember here are scratch players nieto and grimaldi obviously eves can sit back um let me know if you guys want him down in the ahl but i we don't really have room so nieto nieto and grimaldi um everybody's playing in the ahl i think except one like bottom six forward potential guy which is um uh, who is it? Oh, is it? Yeah, it's this guy. But he's 64 overall. Um, yeah, so everybody else is better overall or, you know, really high overall already and exact. Got the climb of bros in, but they're not in the same line. Do you guys think I should put them on the same line? I was thinking having Kevin up here so he can grow a little bit more and maybe in the future uh, Kelly can play fast faxes down here i don't know if i can move them or whatever let me know if that's anything here's d as well we got malochi up here so here's everybody all right well i think that's about it thank you guys so much um i think this is about the last video i'm recording before i head out for uh for michigan and i've blocked a bunch of videos together so it's going to be a 
it's gonna be intense that's that's a tough one whenever you're uh because i won't be able to really record until i think tuesday of next week so thank you guys so much for watching and like and subscribe if you dug it make sure to go follow our twitch channel twitch.tv slash y for turbo that's enough self-promotion we'll see you next time out on the ice Thank you.